Hey everyone, so um, in this video I'm going to do a watercolor and ink study for you guys with of two birds. Um, I decided that, you know what, I'm going to actually use, uh, in these demonstrations, I'm going to actually use a consistent palette, a basic palette that I use. And I'll share my colors with you, so from now on, whenever I do watercolor and ink studies, I'll try to be as consistent as possible using the same color, so that way you can track the way I mix, the way I kind of uh, create my colors and so on. And, you know, hopefully you guys can learn a lot from that process. Now, of course, I have to take, you know, a moment to thank you guys so much for supporting the book. It's meant so much um, for all the support, all the feedback I've gotten, um, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube or uh, Facebook, even via email. I thank you so much, guys. And for those who have taken the time to go on Amazon and left a comment, it means a lot that you guys do that, and thanks so much for that support. Um, now, really quickly, I'm going to be having a giveaway on Instagram in collaboration with Sakura. So I'll be giving a signed copy of my book um, in addition to some drawing supplies that they have sponsored. So, you know, make sure you guys look out for that this week. I'm going to announce it. So, you know, follow me on there to get some more information. So now in the in the pencil stages of the drawing, I'm starting out really light. If you notice the way I hold the pencil, you can see that I'm not holding it firmly at all. I have a really uh, loose grip, and it, and this is just to give me a, a very uh, a lot of freedom and leverage to just roam and get a sense of the proportions. And the more I get uh, more um, definitive about the decisions I'm making, then my grip tightens and I hold it a little bit closer to the point. And I, this is something I, I, I recommend that you do in your process. In the beginning, keep it loose. And as you, you know, progress through the drawing, you get a little bit tighter as the decisions are more certain. Now, as, as I have mentioned before in other ink and watercolor videos that I did, um, you know, when I'm working with ink and watercolor, my approach with ink is a little bit different. When I'm working with ink only, of course, I render a lot more. There's a more shading going on, you know, because it's accounting for light and shade, local value and all those things. But when I'm working with watercolor, um, I'm more con concerned with the contour of the form. And even with the contour, it's not the same as when I'm working with ink only because now the contour is open, you know, I leave, uh, I let the forms breathe a little bit because the color is what's going to be m of main emphasis. The, uh, the ink is meant to just accentuate the watercolor, not to necessarily enclose it or um, stifle it. And it's not meant to draw too much attention to itself. You know, it's almost like you're supposed to feel it's there, but not necessarily be completely aware of it. The color is supposed to speak. So you'll notice I, I do almost no hatching. And it's just strictly focus on uh, the contour and leaving it open. So you guys should know by now that I work in layers. I go really light and then I deepen my colors gradually. And I think this is a very safe approach to use. Um, here I'm using um, ultramarine blue. This is one of the three blues that I use. And I'm just giving a very light wash just to start out with. Now, uh, I'm actually creating my orange using Hansel Yellow Deep and uh, Pyrrole Red. I really don't use an orange in my palette and I actually like creating it myself because you feel the yellow and the red at the same time. Now, creating the gray here using Ultramarine Blue mixed with uh, uh, Burnt Sienna. I find that it, it gives me a nice flexibility because I can make it warm or cool by adding either color in there at, at any time. Now I'm using my Pyrrol Red mixed with a little bit of the uh, Hansel Yellow Deep to create the, um, uh, the mask of the Cardinal. And uh, of course I'm, I'm creating the same gray again with my Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. So now I'm adding phthalo blue, which is really rich, and I'm making sure there's very little water as well, so make sure I keep the saturation pretty intense. And then I'm uh, following that with my uh, second layer of color. So I'm adding now my ultramarine mixed with sepia to make sure it's really rich and deep, and that kind of creates a nice contrast with the uh, the phthalo blue feathers. Um, 
Then I'm also following up on the back as well with another wash of gray. And of course, as I said before, I create that with um, uh, the ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. Sometimes I use uh, sepia if I want it to be a little deeper as well. Then I'm following up with another wash of the uh, the orange that I created using the Hansi Yellow Deep and the Pyro Red. And that will just take the uh, those back feathers a little bit deeper and it creates some depth as well because uh, where it, where it uh, turns away from light, that's the area I'm focusing on. I'm actually making it there really deep so you can feel like it, it really turns over to follow the back, the form of the back. Now I'm using the same uh, ultramarine and sepia mix to create the tips of the, uh, of the feathers. And then generally what I do is I work over this um, as that dry, I make sure it dries. Then I go over it and sculpt it a little bit more. So in other words, I may go in and I, know I won't necessarily um, uh, just layer the entire area. But what I start doing is now I may focus more on the shadowed areas. So the parts of the feathers that I feel that's like turning over, that's where I kind of put most of the emphasis. And it, it, it really creates a sense of volume and depth. So here I'm just uh, adding little details here and there, tweak in certain areas, um, add little dark accents, you know, little places where I feel like shadow needs to be emphasized and helps to separate the, um, the forms of the feathers and so on. So that's essentially what I'm doing now. And you can see that I'm essentially using uh, the same colors. And this is one of the, the, the useful things about keeping a simple palette is that you can uh, pretty much extend all your way around the color wheel by using the same small, relatively small set of colors. Uh, I'm using the same orange that I used to uh, create the, uh, the, the, the bird at the top to render the bird at the bottom. All I'm doing is just shifting the emphasis more to my pyro red instead of the handsome yellow deep. And of course, with the uh, gray area of the cardinal, I'm basically using the same gray with my ultramarine and uh, sienna, or I may use the uh, sepia. And uh, now I'm adding water. Add a, add wa consider water like an additional color. <laughs> All right, so basically uh, I lighten it as the, it, it goes around to the breast of the bird towards the light and use less water as it stays to the shadowed areas. And from here, it's really just fine tuning. Um, you know, after uh, most or all the, the color work is done, then I just focus my attention in reinforcing the, the ink, the, the lines, um, what I'll do is I'll make the lines and the shadowed areas more bold. Um, I'll accentuate some of the details, some of the areas where, uh, for example, like the color may be a little bit opaque. Um, I will just emphasize those, uh, those lines, you know, strengthen them a bit. I may add a little bit of detail sometimes, especially with the feathers. I may put, add a, a few strokes here and there. Um, but that's about it. I'm really just, uh, strengthening the line work because there's there's a careful balance you have to strike between reinforcing the line work and accentuating the colors but not taking attention from them the colors are what uh, are supposed to speak the loudest okay so thanks everyone for watching i really appreciate it um, if you enjoyed the video uh, learned something or was just inspired please give the video a thumbs up um, and if you haven't subscribed already please do so you can be notified whenever there's a new upload and uh, you can see more videos like this one, right? So hopefully you guys learned something. And remember, uh, try to do your best to keep your palette simple. It's very important for learning how to mix watercolors. Keep your palette simple. See you next video, guys.